hello everyone welcome to my youtube channel my name is evidence and in today's video i am going to show you how to implement a ridge regression for a regression problem so to begin before i actually start writing any code i'll just go ahead and tell you that one of the difference between a ridge regression and other type of regression models is that a ridge regression has an alpha value and this alpha value is the regularization strength of the model and this regularization strength improves the conditioning of the problem and reduces the variance of the estimate so basically it reduces overfitting all right and if you look at the if you look at the documentation for ridge regression from scikit learn right here you can see um, the same definition right here and you can see the different parameters and alpha is one of the parameters you have to provide and the default is one and larger alpha values specifies a stronger regularization and it's using the L2 regularization method and this is like the different parameters you can tune and then we have different attributes in the next video I am going to show you how to explain your ridge regression model and we'll be using one of these attributes coefficient and this is a different method that you have with a ridge regression model you have the fit method and you have the predict method the scoring method and other methods so with that being said let's go ahead and get started so the x train y train s test y test that i said that i'm going to be using i've already done the work of cleaning it up and getting it ready for modeling if you want to learn how to clean up your data um, you can watch other videos on my youtube channel or you can search my youtube channel for a project called insurance premium and i did that project live on my youtube channel from beginning to end i cleaned up this data and did the encoding and just prepared it for modeling so for us to do ridge regression we need to import the ridge function from scikit-learn so from sklearn dot linear models import ridge ridge cv is if you want to do cross validation alongside doing your ridge regression but in this case we just do a ridge and during our ridge regression modeling it's always good to scale your data set before you do ridge regression so i'll go ahead and import the standard scaler and if you're working offline or working in a virtual environment or working in jupyter lab jupyter notebook or vs code make sure you have scikit to learn in your environment first before you try to import it i'm working in google collab and i know i already have scikit to learn in google collab so the standard scalar documentation tells us that it standardizes the features by removing the mean and scaling to the unit variance. So if you want to learn more about um, standardization, you can go to the documentation. So we'll begin by scaling our data. So we are going to call it X train scaled. S for scaled is equal to first we need to instantiate our scalar. So and we are just gonna use the default parameters and if you go back to the documentation for standard scalar you can see that one of the method is fit one of the method is transform but fit transform is combining this and this basically fit is like we wanted to fit this model through our data frame and then we wanted to transform the data frame according to the specified parameters but fit transform does both and at the same time and whenever you are working with a training data and your test data whatever you do to your training data you want to do the exact same thing to your test data and so if you are going to scale our training data we also need to scale our test data according to how we did it to our training data so we need to do also s test s scalar dot transform as you can see and um, this time when i'm doing 
the test data, I'm doing transform only. So when I did the training data, I fit the model, then I transformed it. And since the model has already been fit, I just need to perform the transformation on the test data. So this is why I did transform for the test. So make sure you only do transform on the test data and fit transform on the training data. So this is a preview of our X train data after it has been scaled. And this is what our X train data looks like before it was scaled. So you can kind of get an idea of what we are looking at. After it has been scaled, scaled, our training data is now in array format and this is what it looks like. So let's begin with an alpha of 10. You know, so alpha is basically the regularization strength for the model. And you can experiment with different alphas. And I'm going to show you how to do that, how to like experiment with different alphas with in all at the same time, instead of trying, trying out different alphas at a time. But let's just begin with an alpha of 10 and let's run the reach regression model. Then I'll show you how to do several different alphas at the same time. So let's instantiate the model and let's call it ridge model ridge and then we are going to specify the alpha the default alpha is one but we want the alpha to be 10 in this situation and then we are going to fit the model through the data so we are going to do um ridge dot fit and we want to fit our x train scaled our scale scaled training data and after fitting the model, we want to use the model for prediction. So we are going to do our white bread. Let's call it white bread ridge. It's equal to ridge model dot predict. And we want to do our prediction using our S test scale. Oh yeah, I need to provide the Y data. So we want just Y trend. All right, so we have fit our ridge regression model using, using an alpha of 10, and then we have done our prediction using this regression model. Now we can just type in something like white bread ridge to get a preview of what it looks like. And so this is our predictions right here. And the thing is, whenever you create a model, you need to have a way to evaluate its effectiveness right so you need to know if your model is good or not good or if your model is improving or not improving so you need to have different metrics for evaluating your model and for this regression problem we are going to be using regression metrics if you're working with a classification problem use classification metrics regression problem use regression metrics and if you look at the scikit learn documentation here it gives you different, it gives you a preview of the different metrics you could use for classification and different metrics you could use for regression. So for this one, we'll just use mean absolute error and mean squared error to evaluate our model. So to evaluate our model first, we are going to import regression metrics. So from sklearn.metrics, import mean absolute error and mean squared error so those are the metric we are going to be using to evaluate our model so we are going to call it um mean absolute error ridge and it's going to be equal to mean absolute error and then we are going to provide our true value that's always the first thing you provide so our y test is our true value and our y prediction is our white bread ridge and then we are going to do the same thing again for mean absolute error so let's call it MSE ridge is equal to mean absolute mean squared error and again the first thing you provide is the true value and then the second thing you provide is the predicted value now we need to print out um, this result to kind of see what it looks like. 
bring the result here. Okay, so we can see that using a using an alpha, a regularization strength of just th 10, we uh, got this result for our mean absolute error and our mean squared error. And of course, we can compare this to the errors that we got for the other models. So in previous video, I showed you how to do a linear regression model, how to evaluate a linear regression model, how to do a random forest model, a gradient boosting model. And I'll just go ahead and grab the error scores from those other models. So this is the error from our ridge regression model using a a, an alpha of 10, which is the regularization strength. And then we can kind of compare this to the result that we got from other models, right? So when we did the linear regression model, we got about the same error scores as our ridge regression model. So using our ridge regression model with an alpha of 10 gives us about the same score as using a linear regression model. And this is like the baseline model. So in a different video, I showed you how to establish a baseline which is what you build, which is what you will compare everything with, right? In a regression problem where you're calculating errors, you want your error to be as low as possible. You are trying to find the model and the uh, model parameter combinations that will give you the lower error scores. All right, so this was our baseline model, which is like the very first model that we did. And our ridge regression model is significantly better than our baseline model and then this is the random forest model right so the random forest regression model gave us the best score that we have so far but our ridge regression model is worse than our random forest model that's kind of how you can think of it because the random forest model has a lower score has a lower error score and then this is the gradient boosting model so the gradient boosting model is kind of very close in scoring than the random forest model. But still, the random forest model is still a better model than the gradient boosting model in this case. And this is just using the default parameters without doing any hyperparameter tuning or anything like that. And then um, if you are comparing the ridge regression model with an alpha of 10, to the gradient boosting model, you can see that the gradient boosting model is better than the ridge regression model. So this is kind of like quickly a quick overview of how to build a ridge regression model and how to evaluate the model. Now we can do this whole thing again and let's say try an alpha of 20, an alpha of 30, an alpha of 40 and so forth and so on. In this next session, I'm going to show you how to do all of that in just one time. You know, instead of running this code over and over again and trying out different alphas, you can actually write code that will do it all at the same time. So let's go ahead and do that. So in this case, we are just trying different uh, alpha values, right? So basically, I went ahead and copied all the code from above. And then basically what we did above, we are going to instantiate our standard scalar. We are going to scale our data frames. We are going to instantiate the model. But this time, instead of giving it just an alpha of 10, we are going to just say the alpha here. It's alpha. We could easily call this A. Or let's say regularization here. And give this regularization here just so you won't get confused. So basically, we are saying that the alpha value is one of these. So the first time this code runs, it's going to do 10. Second time it runs, it will do 20. Second, third time it runs, it will do 30, so forth and so on. We are going to feed the model to our training data. We are going to get a prediction. Then we are going to calculate the errors. So with that being said, let's go ahead and run this and experiment with different regularization strengths. All right, so that was very quick and fast. So basically for an alpha of 10, this is our mean absolute error and our mean squared error. And as you can see, if even for an alpha of 100, it doesn't change much 
from um, regularization strength of 10. And as the regularization strength increases, actually the mean absolute error decreases. I, I mean increases also. So our model gets worse with increasing regularization. You know, so basically an increasing regularization strength in this case decreases the performance of our model so we can go ahead and maybe try a smaller regularization strength here and kind of see how it impacts our model overall so we already know what a regular a regularization strength of 10 will give us let's just do something like 20 here let's go ahead and execute this code so basically a regularization strength of let's say two four six eight you know basically gives us um the same result it doesn't improve the model so now we know that a large regularization strength makes the model worse and a smaller regularization strength doesn't necessarily improve the model compared to like using a regularization strength of just 10. so in a nutshell that is how you will create a ridge regression model in the next video, I'm, I am going to show you how to explain your ridge regression model. So you've created your model and you have your results and you have your metrics. But how do you actually explain the model? How do you know which one of your features is, is responsible for the results that you are getting? So in the next video, I'll show you how to explain your ridge regression model. And you can always find me online at evidencen.com. This is my primary website where I have data science blog and I'm continuously adding more and more stuff to my data science blogs. And if you go to my free data science resources, you'll be able to get access to many free data science resources. So to get access to this notebook that I use in today's video and any notebook that I use in any of my other videos, just go to machinelearningeducation.com slash free. Or you can just go to machinelearningeducation.com and from here you can also click on this and you'll be able to also get access to this page so i create a lot of youtube videos videos and a lot of blog posts and i just find it easier and more straightforward to take all those notebooks and resources and put it under one platform and sometimes i release videos inside this platform long before i make it available on youtube so go to machinelearningeducation.com slash free to get access to this notebook and other resources. That's it for this video. Thank you for watching. And if you like it, please give it a thumbs up. If you didn't like the, the video, but you made it this far, please give it a double thumbs down and still subscribe to the channel either way. And I'll talk to you on the next video. Bye.